We're back on the air. This is Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and I want to thank all our listeners and also our friends over at MTP Software, the leader in the sports and entertainment CRM business who host us and built us our lovely studios. Pretty excited about our next guest. It's sort of a sort of back to the future. One of our original reporters, George Donnelly, now of Northwind Strategies. Welcome back, George. Great to be with you, Jeffrey. It's been a while, and it's yeah. so much fun to be talking with you. Yeah. Well, George, you've always had a soft spot in my heart. You, I think you know that. And vice versa. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> nice to hear. Thank you. Some people have a knife in their heart for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, George, uh, before we get into a couple of topics, you know, you were at the BBJ for many years. What's Northwind Strategies? Northwind Strategies is a strategic communications firm. So we work with a wide variety of clients and helping, in essence, amplify their message, uh, focus uh, some of their uh, marketing in some cases. In other cases, we may be working with them on a specific initiative. Uh, So uh, in terms of getting more mind share within their industries, or uh, in some cases, it may involve public policy as well. So the DNA of the firm comes out of politics, but we do have a lot of broader corporate communications. Uh, our founding partner, Doug Rubin, uh, was involved with, um, was the chief of staff for Deval Patrick and managed his two successful uh, gubernatorial campaigns and also managed uh, Elizabeth Warren's um, successful Senate run. So they, they have that very strong political DNA, but there's also, we do a, a tremendous amount of corporate communications as well. Since I left the BBJ, uh, I, haven't, I, I haven't missed running a newsroom in the slightest bit. I've got to say, it's, it's been... You look nice, relaxed. It's been a nice change for me <laughs> right. in many ways. It suits uh, off. You know, so, um, so that's been good. Uh, but what I haven't lost is my uh, desire to tell people what I think. And so, <laughs> so that's been manifest in a few ways. I, uh, I ended up, uh, I've written about a half dozen columns for the Globe uh, since I left the BBJ. And they're, they're usually around uh, areas of my particular passion, which is trying to understand the Boston economy and what's happening in the, in the economy and, and to give people a little bit more perspective about what direction we're heading and why. So I've had a few. Uh, in April, uh, I wrote a column, the Globe, the Globe published a column uh, of mine on the housing market. And the fun, the fundamental uh, title there was the housing market is broken in, in, in greater Boston. Uh, and, and I think the, t- the actual title was it's more broken than ever. Uh, and we can get into that if you want. But yeah. uh, but. Uh, and then more recently, a few weeks ago, I had a column. They ran another column of mine, uh, which focused basically on something that I know that you um, deal with all the time in your work, is which is the simple lack of available talent for business. It's, it's talent is is in short supply, and across the board. And I and so what caused me really motivated me was I feel like we are at a particular inflection point in the economy where we are at full employment. Uh, that's uh, that's gone beyond what's usual where we usually see the, the, the shortage of talent in the you know the more rarefied tech sectors we have that in abundance and in fact uh, uh, a guy I know a, a really sharp CEO um, of a lot the Eliasson group a guy named Dave McKean who I run into once in a while uh, uh, refers to it as being uh, negative unemployment. You know, we we you know we we have this uh, you know, in in a lot of the industries that he tries to fill that you know the very specific areas, but it's broadened to almost every conceivable sector that we have that there's there's a dearth of people, and it's not just top talent. Part of reporting for the column because I wanted to make sure that I just wasn't dreaming this up, and it's just like anecdotal. I went to a job fair in Randolph. And I just kind of saw that there was one. And this was not for, you know, people with college degrees per se. It was, it was just for people who were looking for jobs. And I went into this room. It was at Lombardi's or Lombardo's, I think. Yeah. It's, and uh, uh, 50 or 70 uh, companies there looking for people of all sorts. And... Uh, yeah, some of it, you know, jobs that you wouldn't necessarily want, but others that in a less good economy would be, wouldn't exist, you know, so it's being felt across the board. And so 
the fundamental question is, how does a, a region like the greater Boston grow if there aren't enough people for these businesses to grow? Because we are, we are in essence, a, an economy that's based on um, knowledge, uh, knowledge workers. It's and a knowledge-based if, economy, and yes. If we can't, if, and if we can't supply enough of that, then we, we're not looking at a very strong growth rate. We can only get so much productivity. We can only, oh. um, and, and yet at the other hand, so while all that is happening, we still have companies coming into the area that want but, to be part of the talent you, mix. 